Yes, 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 yes. Stay, 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 stay. Yes. Keep shooting. Yes. That's right, it's a bomber and it's British. Today, we're going to take a look at the CAC Wirraway. Ooh, we set him on fire. Come on. Boom. I may or may not have tile control issues. That's bad. G'day, I'm Ash, and yeah, that was a bit of a nostalgia trip going through some of the archive of my older videos. I have them kept up to about mm, probably five years ago. Unfortunately, some of the early ones didn't remain, but suffice to say that I used to be a bomber pilot, and that's an embarrassing fact for me, but I started War Thunder playing in that Pacific role because I had a no idea that mouse aim existed. Now, a friend of mine then told me, hey, you can actually play this with the mouse. And I was just like, what? At the time, I was playing on a laptop. And, well, suffice to say that, well, many years later, I don't touch bomber aircraft anymore. I mean, I did play the Buccaneer recently. And I have had a bunch of fun playing with Collusion and, and colliding G8N1s and BV-238s together when there's a new patch. But besides the point, the Yak-28B is possibly the worst addition to this current uh, sort of update. It's been subject to sort of a bit of discussion, at least initially, and I covered this in my Is This Update Any Good? Listen to this clip here. The Yak-28B is possibly one of the worst offenders of air RP tactics that I've seen in a very long time. This is basically the embodiment of all things that players hate about bomber aircraft. This is probably why Gaussian have been necessarily quick to add stuff like the Vulcan B-2, the T-95. So the Yak-28B is a, I guess, a, a very invulnerable space climbing bomber that relies heavily on the AI ticket bleed. And honestly, even if this does get an attacker version with interceptor or missiles like there was another version of, this thing is completely and utterly useless to a team and just encourages bad team plane camping over airfields. And that opinion very much lines up with what today's video is about. This vehicle is near utterly useless. It serves no purpose in the game other to really just extend the grind. Essentially, it's 9.3, but you'll get up-tiered most of the time. You can't do any maneuvers or else the thing's wings will rip unless you're above 7 kilometers altitude. It just doesn't really do it for me. A 23mm gun with 50 rounds of ammunition and 3,000 kilogram bomb? Okay, that's nice and all, but it's countermeasures. Mm, okay, fair enough for its battle rating, you get countermeasures. But again, this is a good looking aircraft, but it serves no real purpose in the team deathmatch environment we have currently. What is top tier at the moment? Missile Thunder. What is, what is it about, you know, gameplay that you don't necessarily want to see you don't want to see another fucking space climbing bomber that's going to the moon basically on a, on a on a lunar orbit to try and bomb a base out that really doesn't matter in the hindsight and in fact you're holding up your team by wasting a fighter slot that could be actually useful unfortunately Gaussian's game decision and the way they've developed the game indicates that bombers have no place and I've talked about this before in bombers are bad in war thunder or whatever the video title is uh that was a very unstructured rant type video, and it still holds true today. You go back over YouTube's archives of videos, and you'll find a plethora of sort of vehicles and discussions talking about how to balance bomber gameplay. Have they done any of that? Have they implemented any of those sweeping changes? No, they really haven't. And ultimately, the game has still remained the same despite the new additions of other aircraft, further progressing this top tier esque focus, which undermines the whole essence of adding Cold War and, well, future fighters and bombers and just aircraft in general. Now, I like aircraft, and I really love the look of the Yak 28B. Unfortunately, the Interceptor version will probably better have suited. The Buccaneer is probably another useless vehicle, but at least it has air to air missiles. You know, it has flares, it can do something. Unfortunately for the Q5A, and to the extent the Q5 early, these vehicles are basically useless. It 
all boils down to a bunch of exploiting players who decided in air arcade battles back in the day to bring out year twos. Now the year two was a comparable bomber at least back five, six years ago. But in hindsight, looking back at the history of War Thunder's development, they have constantly neglected the either the map design, the map balance, or even mechanics to at least allow bombers to be useful in some manner or way. Whether that's giving incentives for fighters to protect them giving them a bonus to protect them or whether that's just keeping and 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 you know just integrally making sure that flight models and the damage models stay at least historically representative of what the actual vehicle might have been known for but that's hard because war thunder hasn't been historically accurate for years you might argue well yeah that's true but i'd like to introduce you to a term called dead on arrival doa dead on arrival essentially these are the terms and, and things that you'd associate with certain types of vehicles that I suppose would be additions that would have been nice three or four years ago. However, because they've been added so late or they're just put in as filler content, they really serve no purpose other than to be just that. For example, the F-84Fs. Again, it's a classic case of adding things too little too late. The fact that these things sh should have been out like three or four, even five years ago, is just testament to how slow sometimes development can be. And I understand there is a development process, but again, it's like the skimmer very useful initially, but then kind of died off right off the bat. And for fans of aviation, particularly playing your favorite aircraft can be a bit troublesome when it's no longer the meta vehicle. Is that a problem? Well, not necessarily. The game's got to evolve, but in hindsight, it undermines the whole entire reason why bomber aircraft are in War Thunder. Would you like another copy-paste MD-452 Mystia 4A? Well, that's what we got last patch. And it just sort of sits at the bottom of this tech tree, just expanding the grind a bit. Hell, you've already got like seven of them to go through. Why not add some of the wacky French prototypes? Again, this is another example of a vehicle that's been added a little too late. This should have came out with an introduction of the French tech tree. And I get that you schedule and you'll pre-schedule content up in advance. But honestly, if you're going to be a bit of a shit about it, at least have a roadmap and at least have some public clarity, allowing us to sort of understand your development process. There's no point adding the next tier beyond visual range missile and then coming back and going oh by the way we've added this world war ii technology that nobody is actually going to give a flying fuck about that's my issue here and with bomber gameplay particularly it's almost as if guardian entertainment sees bombers as an alcoholic father sees his adhd child he never wanted and that is a harsh statement but you look at it briefly here they can't have this mentality. Bombers do literally zero in terms of ruining gameplay for everyone other than the person playing the bomber aircraft. And with a reduction of rewards and increase in repair costs, nerf to gunners and nerf to damage models, for obvious reasons, because people were exploiting these things, they serve no purpose in War Thunder, and that is the honest truth. Even fast attackers and fast bombers, while they are still fun and still great to do, the SU-7, compared to the Act-28B, is probably a better choice for you in the long run. Plus, it's got a better viability to be used as a interim fighter or an interceptor, if you can so call it that. Gone are the days where you'd fly in a formation of four B-17s or eight B-17s in one match. And I'm glad those days are gone, and I'm glad I got to experience those early on. As someone who's played the game for a very, very long time now, I'm going on eight years, it's kind of crazy to think how far War Thunder has come in that time period. But in the same time, and in the same time period, I'm looking back and I'm thinking, they haven't actually done anything to the core part of the game which made the game interesting to play and fun to play. Whether it's escorting a fighter or escorting a bomber or just having a bunch of fun with friends. You know, I, I log on every day and I see less and less people playing, and I wonder if that's specifically because aircraft like these exist to waste people's fucking time. And if you really want to play bombers, there is enduring confrontation for sim. There are sim, uh, as I just mentioned. So Simulator is a place for you guys. But not everybody wants that kind of experience. Some people just want a more casual experience. And unfortunately, War Thunder doesn't cater to that. Their game mode system is kind of a bit garbage. And you can't necessarily rely on Guardian Entertainment or the War Thunder devs really fixing any of these problems. Because it's not really the highest priority. It's not like a major bug. It's not like a major fix. So I doubt it is really high on their list of fixing. Let alone high definition cockpits for the bloody bombers themselves. 
so let's not get started on that one. The game's not going anywhere, the player base is higher than ever, but its issue is still withstanding the lack of game modes and supported things for general types of aviation. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I making sense, or am I just talking a bunch of nonsense? Let me know. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ash, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.